I welcome all of you on platform of your PD education you know on a platform of your PD education as you know we are uh, interacting with the world famous faculties professors academicians visionaries in uh, largely in the areas of technology and uh, industries so uh, in that direction only uh, I'm interacting with the uh, professors of Indian universities and abroad foreign universities in that line only today uh, I'm going to interact with professor Munjal uh, professor Munjal is one of the authority I will say and pioneer in the field of uh, vibrations and noise control uh, his work the work he has done he has spent a uh, lot many decades in ISC Bangalore in fact uh, uh, he is uh, one of the rare example in which IIT uh, ISC Bangalore offered him position of uh, faculty only after doing masters normally you know that uh, you cannot become professor or faculty in IITs or ISCs without PhD but professor Munjal uh, was a rare example when he did marvelous work in MTech on mufflers you will listen to that in the interaction and because of his work which he did nobody had done that work earlier and because of the work which he did on that uh, many of the faculties of IC Bangalore persuaded him to join as faculty only in IC and keep doing the work uh, that time director uh, of IC showed some kind of reluctance also but yes he was inducted later on and he became later on the professors also uh, professor Munjal uh, you listen to entire interaction is very very enriched motivational and a uh, lot of ideas you will get it uh, he told that uh, if some work has not been done in engineering like nobody has done in that then there is opportunity so we should not always try to do something which already has or uh, somebody has already done we should try to find out the problem around us and try to find out the solution for that if that solution has not been provided by anybody then there's a great opportunity and that is what professor Munjal did now uh, in this particular thing professor Munjal is uh, now uh, retired but he's still there with ISC Bangalore he is retained by ISC Bangalore as professor emeritus and honorary professor so he is basically in the domain of uh, uh, vibration and noise control and he has taken lot of consultancies also so his uh, research interest if I tell you is muffler acoustics industrial and automotive noise control and ducts and mufflers domain and he has been teaching these uh, subjects also in IC uh, so many research papers 200 plus research papers he has many conferences and many industrial projects 100 plus industrial projects and recently is uh, uh, not recently but yes you know, some uh, year 2013 uh, may sir wrote one book of noise and vibration control and this is one of the best book on uh, this particular domain so this is the research work of professor Munjal and if I tell you about the awards he has got many awards you know Shanti Saru Bhatnagar award uh, he has been bestowed award by uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and so many awards have been bestowed on professor uh, uh, Munjal and also he has been uh, given the excellence award DRDO academic excellence award uh, you must be knowing uh, Professor Satish Dhawan, you know, great uh, space uh, scientist also. He's been, he was the director of IC Bangalore and uh, he, Professor Mujal uh, was faculty when he was director there. So he has mentioned a lot about Professor Satish Dhawan also. I'm very sure that uh, you are going to uh, enjoy this entire interaction and I want you to listen very patiently this entire interaction I had as you know whenever I interact and get opportunity to interact with such visionary I make some kind of questionnaire so the kind of questions I asked him was his journey to ISC it's very very interesting uh, sir says that we moved from Pakistan to India and then Punjab and from there ISC Bangalore and spent entire his life academic life in ISC Bangalore his research areas and uh, he talks about uh, what muffler is and Frita is a dedicated research acoustic center created in IC Bangalore he talks about Frita and uh, also what are the effective techniques for noise and vibration control that is what I discussed with him and other than all these questions I discussed with him that how what are the entrepreneurial opportunities suppose I'm doing BTEC, MTEC or PhD or I'm working in industries then what are the entrepreneurial opportunities in this domain of vibration and control and uh, sir also mentions many places interesting things how American and German 
uh, industries and these countries wanted him to be in those countries and keep working for them but sir uh, said that i stayed back i prefer to stay back in india in isc and uh, contributed here only so that is i mean uh, if you think that research is only in those countries and not in countries like india we need to uh, listen to this very carefully research can be done anywhere but yes uh, this is the quite inspirational journey earlier uh, i expected that sir will give me half an hour the kind of schedule sir has but it was almost two hours long interaction and i'm very sure if you sit sit patiently and listen to it then there is a very very important information which will be revealed to you in the entire interview and uh, you will get benefited through this so let's uh, enjoy this interaction uh welcome uh, professor monjal and thanks a lot sir for giving me this opportunity and time to interact with you thank you dr rajendra thakur you know it's really a pleasure talking to you and uh, the kind of things you have in mind i'm sure you'll not be disappointed <laughs> okay so i have always mind research development and consultancy in fact i have done more than 120 projects with industry Great, so i'm sure you know you will not be disappointed you know about your basic uh, objective i am honored sir i am honored to interact with you today and uh, uh, professor munjal the largely uh, the followers of this my channel or the viewers are technocrats those who are uh, doing engineering or those who are masters or those who are working in industry so i am very sure sir interaction with you and a pioneer in uh, vibration control uh, uh, professor i am very sure that uh, this is going to help all of uh, us all of the uh, people over there so uh, i have made some kind of homework sir before coming for the interaction uh, based upon your profile and uh, i have made some kind of questionnaire here so uh, i will be discussing on that and my first question normally is about the personality so sir we want to know about you all i know about you is that you are from uh, you started your journey from punjab university and now you are in iic bangalore so i we want to know about you sir well uh, i just give you briefly my background uh, i was born in what is now pakistan okay uh, in the district of multan great even we spoke punjabi you know when we shifted i was only four, three year old so i don't remember much but main thing is we started from a refugee camp okay and that has had lot to do with you know how i grew up how i you know uh, you know supported myself and so on and so forth okay uh, i'll just uh, briefly tell you that i studied in hoshiarpur uh, in it's not in dharam higher secondary school in fact at the end of the higher secondary i uh, got fifth rank in punjab university and you know punjab university those days was a single university for the whole of what is present punjab haryana and himachal pradesh right okay so and good thing was that you know in that year only you know the government of india started the, they called it government of india scholarship for life right uh, which really means that once we get it i mean What they said was that first ten ranks of every university in a country will get this scholarship, and after that, you know, they don't have to necessarily get ranks, but minimum first class should be there. Okay, so that is how, at one go, my whole career was taken care of by government of India. Great. And then I did my uh, pre-engineering in Hoshiarpur uh, Government College, but earlier used to be Punjab University College before university shifted to Chandigarh. okay and then uh, i joined punjab engineering college chandigarh and uh, uh, you know registered in mechanical engineering so during those uh, four years all the time my, you know my basic thing was that i wanted to get into research in fact that's what i have been doing right from childhood i have done i did lot of things which was surprising for others but for me it was just self challenging and that really stood me in good stead later on in life okay now uh, from engineering college then you know actually uh, we had a educational tour uh, during that uh, third year and that is when i discovered the indian institute of science i i had no idea of this institute and but once i saw i knew that is the place that's what i have been subconsciously looking for and fortunately you know uh, i was selected a uh, master's degree in internal combustion engineering uh, without any interview without any test etc 
and that is how I joined that place. And uh, again, I mean, I was again fortunate that I opted in all the semesters uh, in this uh, place. And uh, and main thing that I want to tell you was that happened in fourth semester. In the fourth semester, I was asked to I was given a project to work on uh, analysis and design of mufflers. No, I had no idea at all. We had studied 23 subjects during ME, but not a single one was dealing with acoustics or noise or noise control. Okay, but anyway, I took up the challenge. I went to the library and searched, and then I got a book, uh, Fundamentals of Acoustics by Kinsler and Frey. And I, you know, studied that book on my own. And in fact, uh, that was very good because I studied on my own. I really worked out the whole book, uh, the, you know, the whole thing in about 10 to 15 days. And it was during that time that I realized that very little had been done on the muffler acoustics. And so that is how I challenged myself, uh, you know, to find a, you know, method. So I further found out, you know, one paper from Japan, it was on transfer matrix methods. And I told myself that, you know, I, let me start with this. And I kept working, and as I was working, I found that you know some um, patterns were developing so much so that you know I, I really was able to develop a set of a, a kind of algorithm to directly write the insertion loss or velocity ratio of a muffler in terms of impedances and wave numbers, etc., without writing any equations, without multiplying, without doing anything. Okay, so this was a great breakthrough. And uh, it, uh, when I presented it, uh, you know, in my seminar, you know, uh, I, everybody was really, in fact, surprised. The only question I was asked was, how did it occur to you? Okay. <laughs> and that was one question I had to, I, I would face all through my life later on also. Okay. But anyway, good thing was that at the end of the interview, uh, all the uh, faculty of the department, they, uh, you know, uh, requested the, uh, what used to be head of the department those days, uh, you know, him to really make sure that, you know, I am offered a lectureship here. Okay. And then a, a case was made. Uh, in fact, in the meanwhile, I had been selected by Tata Motors or what used to be called Telco those days at okay. Pune. Right, but then, you know, I was told, no, 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 I am not leaving. And they told me that, you know, I should wait for a week. And I, then I waited and uh, Professor Satish Dhawan was director of the institute at that time. And he was very particular that the person should be PhD before he joins the faculty. Okay. But, uh, you know, then the department head and the faculty, they were able to persuade him to make an exception in my case. Great. And uh, fortunately, he agreed. But he said he will do it only for one year. Okay. I'll be on a temporary post, supernumerary post. It will especially, especially created for me. And within one year, I'll have to compete with uh, you know everybody else and then uh, see what happens. So when I was, it was told to me, I said fine. Then in fact they were surprised because they thought that I'd like to have some surety. I said no, should no, no don't worry. I mean I, I'll take care of myself. Yeah. Anyway, so it was during that time uh, that I uh, went a step further and you know this algorithm I which was mainly for analysis. You know, I was able to uh, use it in such a way that I was able to design most general mufflers, most general vibration isolators. In fact, you know, the kind of papers that I published in Journal of Sound and Vibration those days, they were the first of its kind in, the, in, the, in our institute or department. And, uh, you know, it became, I, I sort of developed a niche area for myself. Okay. And anyway, the one thing that I want to tell you and to you, the listeners, uh, that in the interview, which took place 10 months after my joining as temporary uh, lecturer, uh, I competed with seven persons. All of them were PhDs. I, was the, I, I still was not PhD at that time. That's and I was the only person selected. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. You know, that, so that, that is what I want to tell you here. That, you know, when you challenge yourself, when you do certain things, say, which, are, which is just not incremental improvement or what was the state of the art, Right, sir. Here, I, here I did something which directly could be applied to uh, electrical wave filters, vibration isolators, acoustical filters. In fact, anything, making use of electromechanical acoustic analogies. 
you know, I, I was able to do all that and come out with most general, uh, you know, for example, the paper that I published those days, you know, it was rational synthesis of vibration isolators Thanks. or rational design of exhaust mufflers. Uh, they remain till today the only ones of that time. Thanks. In fact, that is what really uh, gave me a really uh, very big, uh, 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 what should I say, inspiration to continue on those lines. Thanks. And it was in fact, uh, two years after I started working, I did my first literature survey. You okay. know, people start their research with literature Lovely survey. Yes. Okay, and then try to do something better. Right, right sir. And I, I, because I did everything on my own, completely by using mathematical induction. Right, okay, sir. and the combinatorics, linear right, algebra. Right, okay, uh, I didn't even know uh, now what was publishable or not. So, but I, I, I said, fine, now let me start the... Uh, I did my literature survey. Right. And uh, and then I found that not only mine was much better and easier, etc. Right. It was much less error prone. Right. Because I was not doing any calculations. So there's no question of human errors. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm just doing, using some algorithm to straight away write the final answer analytically. Right. Right. Okay. So that really also told me what particular element in the isolator or uh, acoustical filter, what effect it will have. Right. And therefore, I was able to develop, you know, most general design criteria purely from uh, heuristics. Right, sir. And so that that was that was the beauty of it. Right, anyway, sir. so uh, then you know, I I got my PhD, and then uh, uh, fortunately, just that time or that year or one year earlier, Indian National Science Academy started, you know, what was what were called Science Academy medals for young scientists. Right, sir. Okay. So this is uh, you know. I was one of the first to get it. I was just 30 year, not 29 year old at that time. Right. And I got that award at the hands of Ms. Indira Gandhi. Because those days, you know, it was uh, handed over at the, uh, the Indian Science Congress by right. the Prime Minister. Right, sir. So, so that was another uh, big, uh, what should I say, uh, you know, encouragement for me, which right. really kept me going. Right. Anyway, so what I want to further tell you is that because, you know, I had this, uh, you know, developed everything myself. So uh, I was uh, uh, invited to Germany, not under Humboldt Fellowship, but directly as visiting professor. Okay. Okay. And uh, though I, I didn't, I had not no idea. I, mean, I knew a little of German, but that's not all. Uh, but that again became advantage for me because uh, then uh, you know I I was asked to give a, a, you know a series of lectures, and so I what I did was because my German was not so good, and others English was not good. So I started. I would make uh, notes one week in advance, get them uh, xeroxed, and then hand it over as handouts next time. So everybody has those things before him. Right. And so now this thing that which was actually uh, just something necessary. Now that really became a big advantage because at the end of that one semester, you know, you know, I had. Seven professors who had almost become my fans. Okay. Okay. And uh, and then whatever notes I made, that became the first approximation of a book which I wrote later on, published. In, you know, it was published by John Wiley, New York. And till today, that remains the only book in the world. Okay. And uh, so this is, you know, I just wanted to give you all this little background because with this, you know, uh, we were able to proceed much better. Right. And in fact, uh, when I was coming there, then they offered, you know, why don't I take a project? I, I took up a project from Volkswagen Foundation. And uh, under that, we actually, uh, uh, you know, developed a method for analysis of perforated element mufflers, which was not done up to that at all. And then, and that, uh, during that time, again, you know, opportunities keep, kept coming uh, in 1983. I got, uh, you know, a communication that Nelson Industries in USA, uh, they were conducting a, a, you know, a paper competition all over the world. And, uh, you know, uh, so I, I and my student, you know, who was a PhD student with me, so we, we sent a paper and um, based on this new work that we had done, and we got the first prize. So that really meant that both me and my student, they were invited, all fair paid, hotel, etc., everything paid up to USA. And then present those papers in the Nelson Acoustical Conference, Great. which again meant another thing that in that conference, you know, 
people came to know about the kind of work uh, i had been doing and because up to that time i had not gone abroad at all i mean sorry except the german visit okay right. i had not attended any international conferences people didn't know me and people these days or even those days also they're very lazy to read uh, journal papers right sir okay they only go to conferences and then listen to people and get ideas and all that that's how it happened but anyway this conference became again a, a kind of a trend setter and uh, i was able to do lot of uh, good work uh, up to 1986 when i became full professor now you know the, you know in integral science we have a tradition uh, that uh, you know we are not promoted by any interviews etc you know uh, we submit a report uh, which goes to international referees and six of all of them in fact all of them must say that this gentleman is known already has made it he has uh, is known all over and he would also deserve to be professor even in their university okay okay, okay? so okay. that is how we are promoted and okay. now uh, it so happened that one of the professors in fact he was director in uh, germany uh, in his comments he gave only one line comment for me and that was that dr manjal is mr acoustics of india okay <laughs> okay and that really you know uh, became a big thing because uh, not only i became a full professor you no know, Pr- Pr- sian rao who was the director of our institute at that time and you know he really you know started looking for what i had been doing and things like that and he was very particular about you know Uh, encouraging his faculty you know and the, i mean recognizing them and he himself was now uh, 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 i think secretary general secretary of indian national science academy anyway so in that year 1986 i was nominated for fellowship for indian national science academy which i got very at the very first attempt i became fellow and not only that i also uh, in the same year i got the santi sroop nagar prize in engineering sciences for the year 1986 and not only that international academy for engineering which was just formed next year 87 i was invited to join you know uh, as a fellow and that is how i joined that also i got indian academy of sciences bangalore a fellowship at the same time so 86 87 was uh, what is what you say watershed uh, uh, year for me uh, but more than that you know good thing that happened was same nelson industries uh, invited me again now as as uh, visiting uh, they call it Uh, i think visiting engineer right. okay and uh, i was asked to work on active noise control because well, up right. to that time i had been working on passive noise control mufflers etc and i i told dr larry erickson who invited me he said but i have not worked on active noise control at all till today and then he said you don't have to tell us whether you have worked or not we know that you you will and you can okay and uh, and I, fortunately when i went there i really proved him right we published six papers in journal of acoustical society of america and for the first time i was able to give them how an actual system works because what happened was people had some mis uh, you know bad notions they said that you know you have a have, you know primary noise you have secondary noise they cancel each other there is nothing like that you know energy is there is no negative energy energy is both positive right. so main thing i told them was that they when they are you know tuned they uh, you know unload each other which means they apply zero imp- acoustic impedance such that the primary source is silent and second source also silent so it is not that you know both are producing so much sound no both are silent it's a beautiful thing this impedance mismatch i mean impedance uh, you know a mismatch which uh, later on i developed in a big way for uh, passive systems also but that was a big breakthrough and even in fact when i was leaving nelson industries Uh, then they asked me if uh, you know i could continue and as usual in you know american way of putting i could choose any salary i could choose any you know uh, you know designation and so on so i, I said no please i mean i have been very very called patriotic or whatever but i was very particular that if even people like me leave the country then what will happen to the country somewhere you know some people have to make the country proud okay and i personally felt the country had given me everything you know uh, you know which of whatever i deserved so whereas i knew also what us say that uh, when they want you they can lift you to the skies and when they don't they, they can just drop you like a hot coal okay they just won't think twice 
Okay, I said, whereas our countries, our traditions are different. Anyway, so I came back. But before coming back, again, they took promise from me that I, I would join their research advisory council. Okay, which meant that I, I used to go after that every year, every summer, for 15 days, uh, attend the meeting of the research advisory council. And also, of course, uh, informally offer them some uh, consultancy about the design of mufflers, etc. So this was, uh, you know, one part of the background I wanted to tell you. But now that when, when I'm at it, let me also tell you, it was during that time that uh, Dr. V.K. Atre, who, you know, who was DRDO chief of this, yes. now he uh, asked me if I could work on acoustic stealth. Okay, now I had no idea at all again. I was hearing that word for the first time. Uh, but then, you know, uh, uh, then he said, don't worry, you just first say yes, and then uh, you will know that you can do it. I said, well, fine. I, it's, it's really, I've, I've been very fortunate that, you know, uh, people have had that kind of, uh, you know, faith in me. Just one second. Yes, sir. So that is when I, uh, I took up a big project, but started working on what I called acoustic propagation across lined hulls. And I, I, I continued along with my students working for 10 years on that. And at the end of that, let me tell you, uh, we were able to develop a complete, uh, not only methodology, but the, but the corresponding algorithm, uh, a, a software, uh, you know, for designing what, what I call uh, resonator linings, such that when a, a signal comes from the sonar of uh, you know the enemy, it simply absorbs it. Because it absorbs it, no reflection goes back, and therefore we don't know our submarine is there. So that is what is called acoustic stealth that, that will not be able to detect uh, our submarine. And even if they detect, uh, you know, it will be uh, signal will be so faint. Okay, that you know, I mean, uh, they wouldn't be able to know where it is, what distance, what angle, etc., etc. So practically, we were able to make our submarines invisible, and this was a, a great thing because uh, I mean, well, I can tell you, I hope with your, your of course, your television, etc. But uh, the main thing is we could replace the Russian, uh, you know, uh, submarine lining, etc. Uh, which, and that which meant saving of hundreds of crores of rupees per submarine. Okay, and uh, and in recognition of all this, in 2009, uh, I was honored by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, you know, with the DRDO Academic Excellence Award for the year 2009. Okay, so this is how uh, you know it has been continuing. Later on, also I got many recognitions. That's not important, but I just want to tell you what all uh, I have been able to do. And mainly, I want to stress that it was all because I, had, I was challenging myself. You know, I will never think that I cannot do. You know, people often feel that if nobody else has done, how can I do it? Can, how can I do it? And I would always tell myself, if anybody in the world uh, can do it, why can't it be me? Yes. You know, so this, this, this one thing I want to pass through you to the listeners, yes. that, you know, attitude is very important. Right. And self-challenging has been the really the main thing which has brought me to whatever I am today. Right. I think I hope I've answered your question. That was very well said, sir. And uh, I'm, I am I know it beforehand. I was knowing that I am uh, sitting with the authority of vibration and mufflers. This is the term. Even I have done my PhD in mechanical, sir. But mufflers and all, these are the terms which were uh, unheard of. I tell you honestly, sir. And uh, on the basis of uh, uh, Professor Munjal, whatever you told, uh, on the basis of that, I have a couple of questions. Uh, I think very briefly, uh, I can seek uh, your opinion on that. Uh, my first question to you, sir, is that whenever some student joins a master's program or PhD program, then nowadays their uh, first, uh, their, uh, I'll say uh, they start thinking that uh, my professor is not helping me and I'm not knowing what should I do, what I should not do. And as you said, if some, no one has worked in particular field, there is the opportunity. So professor, I want to tell, uh, uh, I want to uh, you to tell us 
uh, about this particular aspect like when you join for higher education courses in engineering then identification of the problem on which you want to work in your case it was muffler sir which was unheard of by you and that changed everything later on so how a student in masters and phd should proceed to identify the problem yeah you know what uh, uh, i want to tell you here is uh, again i'll take it back a little because that and yes, is a little important yes sir uh, you know when i did my 7th uh, grade in school you know uh, at the end of that i was uh, playing outside and my brother you know felt that you know we we were we were very poor in what by all normal standards he said you know that we can't afford to do that you know we should you should be studying and all i said anyway i have been standing first uh, in the school so what else he said no no that that's not sufficient he said that you know you don't you don't know what happens in eighth standard and then you should get scholarship and then only you'll be able to study further etc etc Anyway, so I somehow I, I was annoyed because I wanted to play that uh, street street cricket. Anyway, uh, so what I did was I took the mathematics books of the eighth standard and sat on it for ten days. In ten days, I taught myself mathematics of the eighth standard, solved all the problems at the end of every chapter. Okay. and then presented the whole thing as a notebook to my brother okay and and only asked can i go and play now okay <laughs> okay. okay i mean that was a that was a, a, that was a bargain yeah, yeah but that that apart of course he said fine i will go and play <laughs> but that evening when i came back after playing i i really started thinking on what had happened and then i discovered that yes i don't need a teacher i mean I, you know whatever teachers do they, they study all that and the teachers you know and here is one example i could do it myself okay and not only that in the process you know i had found uh, you know several ways of doing things for example i mean i developed what later on i came to know was binomial theorem okay so because that was all because i have been doing this mathematical induction or you know or challenging myself and i have been able to be able to proceed so that so that way i more and more i thought about that evening i could not sleep that night because all the time i was thinking yes i have discovered myself you know so that was a big thing that my brother did unknowingly to me okay and i discovered myself and it was that discovery that for example later on you know when i i, did, I was doing my master degree in mechanical internal combustion engineering okay and uh, I, and then i was asked to work on mufflers now my my good friends you know they were telling you go back to the you know metal department and say no you can't do it because they have not been told why should you 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 know you have been get, getting first rank and he will change it he, he can he cannot insist on some working on something which you don't know anything about and then i told myself again you know that it came back to me i said well perhaps there lies the opportunity yes because i don't know anything about it i am not you know a brainwashed by what people have been doing or not doing all these years right okay so i i i am going to study this book the same way i studied my eighth standard mathematics yes. and i'm going to do it so what i did was i got that book uh, kinsler and fray fundamentals of acoustics and you won't uh, you know believe you know in two weeks time i studied for the whole book and again worked out all the unsolved problems okay. everything and it was during that time that i realized that very little had been done up to now okay so what i'm trying to say is this one thing you know needs uh, reiteration that you challenge yourself and say yes you could do it yes no you, know, you might say that not everybody will come to those standards no yes. that's not right actually what i have been doing is in my way of teaching what i do is i do the same thing see instead of teaching today and then saying you now ask me any problems you have tomorrow no i tell them that tomorrow i'll be teaching this you study these pages from this book and then i'll only ask you what you have not understood <laughs> okay so in this way what happens is the student also gets into that habit very true 
and not only that in that during that one he, he initially might find little you know uh, difficult or you know whatever because he has not been used to it. slowly slowly he discovers himself and many times you won't believe that my students come back to me not only with the, any doubt they have they also say that this could be done this way this could be done yes. better this way easier yes. this way yes. so on yes. other words by the time my student completes his course he is already on the way to research okay and later on and you know uh, because i teach them also in this way that you know all the time challenging them about uh, you know how things can be done or should be done etc so even they you know don't do don't, don't start with literature survey <laughs> okay? okay yes so they first i tell them you know out of this you have you know, a project that six months two months no literature survey no working on the computer etc you know you just take the problem and think as if you are the first person on earth thinking on this solve. problem mm -hmm. and that is how you know many students you know have surprised my me you know and also themselves in, and also come out with research which all of us could be proud of great sir uh, professor uh, munjal i i uh, another point very relevant point other than obviously if uh, somebody else has not done how can i do that in fact it should be if somebody has not done uh, i should do it because there is opportunity that is something which we learned from you sir and that is a really very important message to all those who are thinking of pursuing higher education and uh, purposeful research they want to do my next point through your uh, this uh, little information which we got sir uh, you are the person who was much sought after by many companies in india and abroad in fact you mentioned that uh, during masters you got job in tatas and then german then american they wanted you and all sir there is a misconception in the minds of people that good research goes is going on only in foreign universities and it cannot be done in india there is a very big misconception i tell you sir and you are the live example where people wanted you but you uh, uh, proved them wrong and you came back not only that you were authority and americans are good in poaching the people poaching the brain of india they could not poach you sir <laughs> and i want your perspective on that can a very good research be done in india uh okay uh, yes and no no uh, first thing i want to tell you is that uh, at that time when i started uh, uh, my work in 1968 uh, there was no computer at iis not even calculators okay you still used to work with slide rules okay and the first computer our institute got was in 1971 and that was ibm system 360 which had total random access memory of 64k and that is k not uh, uh, you know mega or megabytes or nothing yes. anyway so and that was to be shared and used to work with cards and something cards and all that so all nonsense so the whole thing was so discouraging you know we didn't have resources and that's why as you said and there was a general notion that no research can be done you know uh, in, in in india but then you know as i say necessity is a mother of invention uh, and that is you know what i uh, multiple to because there was no way of getting numerical results i challenged myself to do everything analytically because analytically it would it was it would become very very messy you know but then i developed the algorithm where i didn't have to do even that in fact i went step, step further i was able to find design criteria everything etc right on the table without doing any calculation so what, so what i'm trying to tell you is that you know the necessity is being a mother of the invention can be converted into a resourcefulness and that is what i did okay but one thing is sure yes i mean now for example if you ask me today Uh, any practical problem i mean it cannot be solved analytically most of the time it is numerically but even there now do i mean i still do analytically up to a point uh, where i have learned all about what mathematics later when i get into that okay but now people because they don't have confidence in themselves okay uh, and they have otherwise got good first rank etc so they use that to go abroad and uh, you know do their phd etc there but most of the people i have talked to and you may also talk to 
they don't really go for research. They really feel this is an opportunity to get admission up into USA, yes, not into right. research. Right, sir. Okay, and and those people also know it. Yes. In fact, you know, I I will tell you, I was later, you know, uh, uh, visiting professor at University of Calgary in Canada. And there were 37 students uh, uh, being researched in the mechanical engineering department. And 36 were non-Americans. 36 were non-Americans. Later on, you know, when I came to Nelson Industries in Wisconsin, you know, I was talking to this guy, Larry Erickson, you know, who had done PhD at Wisconsin. So I asked him, you know, uh, I, I said, you know, this, uh, why don't the Americans uh, or American students do I'm sorry, just one second. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it okay? Can you see me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, why don't the American students do PhD? Right. He, he said, you know, basically, remember, all Americans are the, you know, the sons and grandsons or granddaughters, etc., of the people who came from Europe and they were all adventurers, okay? And they were all into business or they were fighters. So none of them, no, you know, intellectual ever came here. Yes, yes. Okay? So we are all basically are by birth businessmen. Yes, yes. And we look at people like you. He told me frankly, people like you as, you know, PhDs available for buying. Okay. I mean, buying, buying can be in a, in a more general sense. Right. You know, it may be a fellowship, it may be an yes, award, sir. it may be whatever, you know. Yes, the main, the main thing is, we are able to make use of your expertise. But paying you almost maybe a I mean, very small fraction of right. what we are going to make from of you later. Right. So therefore, every person in USA feels that it it would be foolish to do PhD. Okay. He would rather uh, come to a level where he can understand how to make use of PhDs yes. and do business. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he was very frank. Yes. Okay. But I'm telling you, there was some put in it because later yes. also, later on also, I found. I mean, I another professor whom I knew very well. You know, that's a Crocker, who is a chief editor of, of the journal, etc. Now he want he was having you know three, uh, you know what did I say, uh, Indian students three Chinese students, six PhDs working under him. And then, you know, the whole department, you know, uh, who are jealous of him, uh, they, they sort of uh, developed some kind of prejudice. Uh, uh, they said, you know, this man, you know, is racist and he wants only people from outside. He's not employing uh, Americans. Who will employ Americans, etc., etc. Just make some case of it. Just to, you know, sort of denigrate him. Now, he gave an open advertisement, right? Starting from the board on the in the department, you know, saying that I'm ready to pay double whatever fellowship he used to offer to uh, outsiders. He, he'll pay double, and uh, he'll uh, you know uh, prefer uh, an American if there is one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Waited for six months. No to get a sing single person who wanted to do PhD, and finally okay. he got an Indian as a visiting professor guide these six people. So he had three from India, three from Chinese, and one Indian visiting professor to guide the six. Yes. And he made himself free to do whatever the head of the department shape and call it whatever. Okay. Yes. What I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, the uh, whole thing is different. And uh, unwittingly, we, uh, you know, fall into that trap. Yes. But unfortunately, you know, most of people won't care so far as whatever they get is better than what they're getting in India. That's fine. Anyway, that, that is their way of thinking, but I must tell you one thing. Things have really changed now. I know lots of people uh, who want to come back. In fact, I uh, I, I accompanied, uh, you know, uh, a small delegation of IIT Roper because I was a senior senator there and they requested me to join that, uh, you know, uh, small uh, delegation visiting uh, various universities uh, all over the world. Okay. And uh, uh, offering right on the spot, you know, assistant professorship to uh, PhDs uh, working in good universities, etc. So we, I, so we were interviewing people there. Anyways, what I want to tell you was that it was uh, uh, during that time that I found 
But now lots and lots of good PhDs want to come back. Yes, sir. In fact, the one thing I can tell you at Industrial Science, you know, every month we get at least 20 applications from good universities all over the world, okay, for faculty. And of course, but we, we don't even select one, mostly one maximum, you know, two months or three months, because we don't want to overstaff ourselves. Yes. Okay, but what I'm trying to tell you is, and even uh, even the other all IITs, new and new IITs, they are getting so many applications all the time. Right. So what I'm trying to say is, people have realized uh, that uh, you know, with uh, I shouldn't say people like Trump around in USA, you yes. know, uh, you cannot be uh, safe or secure at all there. So right. they would rather come back and do some good work. And now that uh, with the government of India, particularly with our uh, Modi ji at that helm. You know, now the facilities are much better in every way. Uh, money is being, being pumped into research. Right, right. And uh, not only the good thing which I like about uh, my minister is that he always says that do something which is useful to the society. Society, very true. Research okay. has to be that way. And that is how, for example, IIT Roper, now they have, you know, identified so many problems which are right. difficult to Punjabis. Right. Punjab, and they are encouraging their people to work on them. And the people have taken up that, those kind of challenges. Right. In, the, in the long run, I tell you, working on a problem, which at the end of the day, uh, you know, results in something useful, is the best thing that an engineer uh, can have. In right, fact, I have, that is what I have always been feeling. That is how I have challenged myself. People often feel that if you are doing a consultancy, you cannot do uh, good publications. Okay. In my case, out of you know 200 odd uh, papers that I have published, at least 55 okay. are purely results of of you know my the problems that I uh, brought back from the field. Yeah. I went as consultant, I you know tried to give them solution, and then I realized no, this is not on. You know this needs really in-depth analysis. Right. And then I came back, gave those problems to my students. And that is how everybody has been working. So that's why I was telling you that, you know, on one side, you know, I could publish, you know, four books, uh, more than 220 papers in international journals, you know, and I did the projects, uh, you know, several crores. I did more than 120 consultancy projects, and out of which at least half a dozen were from abroad. Okay. So what I'm trying to tell you is, the feeling at the end of the day is so nice, so warm feeling I get when I go go to sleep. That you know, yes, I can do something. Because engineer, after all, you know, he, he, the best thing for him to have that feeling. You know, that right. whatever I could do, I did it and it worked. Right. You know, and that is what I do to my students also. In fact, all my students um, they are very much in demand. In fact, you know, invariably when the uh, interviews used to take place in the department, my students were the first to be picked up. And they could really select from more than one job. What I'm trying to say is, this is a very important thing with people, uh, the message that I want to give, so that people should really realize that you know the two are not mutually exclusive. Right. You know, but that's a very important thing. Right, Professor Munjal, uh, this I, uh, through your these points, I also want to ask you related questions. Like uh, when somebody is doing masters uh, and uh, PhD then uh, there is uh, always a uh, confusion i will say or dissonance in the mind of a student like whether we should continue in academics though by temperament or interest he may feel like going for teaching and research and academics but under the ecosystem under the society which uh, prevails in india uh, they are pressurized to think of getting into job, let's say industrial jobs. So though a student may do very good in academics or research or teaching, and as you know, there are wonderful minds over there like you. Had you gone into Tata's and now you are in ISC, in my opinion, sir, you have contributed immensely to the field of research and academics. Now, uh, what is your take on this, Professor Munjal? Like if someone is capable to be a good teacher, an academician and researcher, uh, why he should get into industry only because there is a culture in India that, okay, you should go to job and not for teaching. What is your take on that, sir? I personally feel that if a person uh, is a good researcher, right, sir. Uh, he could get into uh, academics. Right. At the same time, make sure that you know he uh, offers consultancy to industry yes. and then have 
uh, as what Ratan verbally, as we say, you know, have he have the cake and eat it too, you know. Yes. Okay, so basically, that's what I have been doing. Uh, you know, I have, uh, in fact, let, let me tell you that, uh, you know, uh, all my life and even up to the retirement or even later, uh, I have been able to, uh, you know, not only earn myself, you know, uh, good money, but also I have been able to give back to the institute good. by way of overheads more right. than the salary they gave me. Okay, good. Salary. Good. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that satisfaction is big satisfaction. Right. I'm, I'm a free professor, you know. So you. So what I'm trying to say is that it's all a question of how much you expect from yourself, how much you push yourself to do it, okay. And the only people who don't have full confidence in themselves, only they really try to think, should I do this, should I not do that? Right. Because that means they're not sure whether they will make more success in this way or that way. And right. second thing is, people also are in the habit of uh, measuring success uh, by the number of uh, dollars or rupees they make at the end of the month. Right. So that, that's not on. Right. This, is, this is not uh, our, you know, our nature should be. Because yes, money is important. Beyond some amount, what do you do with it? Right, sir. Huh? So what I'm trying to say is then the other satisfaction is much more important. Right, sir. Okay. So therefore, you know, people should really come out of that. Right, okay. Sir. And challenge themselves and do something. And then they'll find that they can choose whatever line they want and they'll make success of it. Right, sir. Professor Munjal, now I would like to enter a little deep into your research area, sir. And you mentioned about mufflers. So honestly speaking, sir, uh, I had never heard about this term earlier uh, till I saw your bio data and all. So we, I want, I want to request you to tell all of us in very simple terms what is this uh, term like mufflers. You are authority on that, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, see, basically, muffler uh, is synonymous with silencer. Okay. Okay. And uh, muffler is basically uh, this term is American term, whereas uh, European term generally has been silent. Sir. Right, sir. Okay, anyway, that, that's a question of detail. The main thing I want to tell you is there are two ways of going about this. Right, sir. One is that we let the sound be produced and then make it pass through a silencer where these waves interact with a uh, acoustic lining of uh, fiber, fiberglass or mineral wool, etc. Right, and, and in the process, uh, lose energy. See, basically what happens is, I, I, I can tell you because you are an outside engineer, uh, we know that the shear stress is, you know, mu du by dy. Right, so basically what we do is we have this material uh, which has uh, fibers of, let's say, 10 to 20 microns as diameter and similar length. Right, and they are all packed in such a way uh, that the total surface area, contact surface area in one square meter is equal to 100,000 square meters. Okay. So we increase the surface area at which shear could take place. And second is because, but when the wave tries to go through two fibers, okay, now the, the, you know, the distance is very small. And because the boundary layer, the velocity will be zero at both the fibers. In between it goes to its maximum and again comes to zero. Right. So what happens the du by dy, that uh, you know the transverse uh, derivative, is very very uh, you know uh, large, okay? Right. Because dy is almost going to zero. Right. So so what happens is shear stress is very very large. So and then surface area is hundred thousand more than what it would otherwise. Right. So net result is that. All uh, kinetic energy and natural, not many kinetic energy it was having wave. Okay, yes. now that gets converted into heat. Okay, and that heat conversion is irreversible, okay. and therefore, uh, you know, all the acoustic signal is absorbed. Okay. So this is what we call absorptive mufflers. Okay, and these mufflers are generally used on heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Okay, uh, where uh, the you know the basically noise is being produced by the air handling. A fan in the air handling unit. Okay, and we don't want that. Uh, you know, this noise should go to the uh, rooms in a, in, a, in a centrally air conditioned hotel, etc. So that that is one side. But, but you know, you cannot use this kind of materials in automobiles. Okay, in automobile exhaust systems temperature is as high as 500 to 600 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. So what happens is these fibers can stand by themselves. Okay. The resin bonding that we use 
that that melts okay. and all, all of those uh, fibers they will collapse into a mess okay so for example a silencer mm. you know that your new silencer that you have today mm. uh, within one month it will become useless in fact okay. i had such an experience <laughs> here uh, in 1975 and professor satish dhawan uh, he was our director okay he was also chairman of the karnataka state council for science and technology so he wrote me a letter he said manjal can you look into this you know that there's so much auto rickshaw noise on the road uh, can we silence can you can you design better silencers okay and then you know i uh, we started the project in fact we had three or four people one from one deputy chief of police one from the you know our departmental head etc etc but the anyway, main thing i was doing and anyway, so uh, we came to know that uh, when we took all those auto rickshaws they were not silencing at all when we when we ripped open the silencer that uh, that the material had become a mess okay because of that thing. okay so then first thing that i told uh, myself is we shall not use these materials uh, in our silencer right so now, next thing you will ask okay then what do you do yes. now this is where i bring you to what i uh, mentioned uh, in passing a few minutes ago uh, impedance mismatch mm -hmm. So what happens is now let me just to give you the idea of impedance mismatch. I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, you know, characteristic impedance of air is much smaller than characteristic impedance of water. Okay. Now when somebody is drowning and you shout instructions to him from outside, you know, poor fellow who is drowning, he cannot hear you at all because impedance mismatch is thousand times. Okay. So whatever you speak, simply is reflected back. from the uh, water surface and not only that reverse is also true if he is shouting for help inside the water you will not hear it because again the sound wave comes meets that uh, surface of uh, water here it uh, air you know uh, the pitch impedance is an order lower than this so uh, then i cannot hear his so this is called impedance mismatch now when we are dealing with mufflers or i mean exhaust systems medium is same so that that we don't have but what we do is we have sudden expansion sudden contraction so we have to create impedance mismatches through air sudden area changes right sir and that has a similar effect of course uh, you know it will be only 10 times or etc not 1000 times so it can, it is not that dramatic but then now we design mufflers in order to use all our engineering ingenuity Uh, to uh, put elements together in such a way that we have a series of impedance mismatches okay. and net result is that the impedance seen at the piston acoustic impedance being seen at the piston is almost zero which really means as if it is it is uh, vibrating into vacuum yes, and therefore no sound is produced so that is what i want, want to tell you here this is the basic difference i repeat in absorptive silencer sound is absorbed into heat in in reflectors or reflective mufflers we have impedance mismatches so that the piston uh, the piston of the uh, precipitating engine the fields acoustic impedance much less than what it would be otherwise and it, therefore it is able to uh, you know uh, generate much less sound and in other words it is that's why it's called muffled like somebody Yes, hold yes. you by the neck. Okay, yes. That is what I thought. Yes, and you cannot shout. Right. So okay. The same thing is happening here. Here, instead of choking being on the extreme side of more pressure, it is opposite. It is almost vacuum. Right, sir. But impedance match works both ways. Impedance mismatch works both ways. Right, sir. Right. So that is the basic principle of uh, automotive mufflers. Okay. And whereas the silencers used on heating, ventilation, air conditioning systems. Can also tell you now. In the last uh, decade, uh, all over the world, new materials have come. They don't use this resin bonding, which will melt. Okay. Okay. And uh, so those are called, uh, you know, basically like oven scorning, etc. You have these companies. They have come out with the long strand fibers, and you, they are put in a in a some kind of a very thin uh, bag. and that bag when you put it inside the muffler uh, it will be just loose but with the temperature both expands 
and becomes put down to it. So that one, that way, now there is no resin bonding. It can stand 500 degree temperature easily, and nothing will happen at all because you know fibers are not directly coming in touch with the air, hot air, etc. So life is also much better. And now people are using uh, you know uh, what we call hybrid mufflers or combination mufflers, which use the principle of reflection right, and absorption together. Right, sir. Okay. Right, sir. Uh, so. Because also, because making purely react, uh, dissipative also is not good because that will be good only at middle and high frequencies. Right, Reactive ones can be good at low and middle frequencies. So hybrid is the best one. It covers low, middle, and high frequencies, right, and that, that's really a very nice thing. So that is how the, even now now I am uh, you know consulted to several companies, and I have I am also now designing all the time hybrid ones. Okay, so our, uh, Professor Munjal, are we in position to solve that problem of uh, noise in the automobile through this particular research which you are doing? Are uh, where, where we stand now? Uh, okay. Now let me also tell you here that uh, you know uh, this uh, problem, uh, I mean silencer design, have been going on for more than hundred years. In fact, the first paper that appeared was in nineteen twenty two. Okay. okay, and that was person was not a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer. Okay. okay, because he was working on wave filters, and then he realized that why don't we use instead of inductance, we use the inductance mm -hmm. or inertia, mm -hmm. and instead of a compliance, uh, sorry, capacitance, use compliance, which okay. is opposite of stiffness. Right. So, okay, and that is how he developed the first kind of muffler and offered the Ford Motor Company, whose uh, cars were making a racket, uh, you know, in uh, you know that time. Okay. okay. Anyway, so what I want to tell you was that uh, it has been going on like this, but now, uh, you know, all companies, all major companies, uh, they have developed uh, their own uh, mufflers, their own silences, and uh, even when they take consultancy from a person like me, finally they don't take me to confidence in what finally they do, okay. because they have to have secrecy. Okay. Okay. So. They never share with me the final drawings. Okay. <laughs> All the okay. drawings they might have developed, uh, you know, through the consultancy, but mm. finally what they do with it mm. or don't do that, they, they will never share. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so that is how they keep their uh, so called secret. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is they are not fully dependent on me at all now. Okay. But at the same time, uh, smaller companies or companies that develop new vehicles. Right. You know, now they don't have uh, that kind of time, uh, you know, to develop the new silencer and right, it will take 12 months of uh, trial and error. Right. So they do come to me okay. and I'm able to give them uh, what I would say, first approximation with itself, you know, with just, I mean, they will have to make two or three prototypes maximum and then finally uh, come out with one good silencer. So right. that, that is how it's happening. But I also want to tell you, the exhaust noise is not the end of the story. Our muffler silencer only uh, takes care of exhaust noise or maybe in intake noise. How about the uh, noise of the body? Okay. You know, basically, we have, you know, that if you look at P theta diagram, uh, you know, of the engine, so you have a very strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, variation of pressure within the cylinder. Now that makes the you know, cylinder head uh, vibrate. And because that is bolted onto the rest of the engine block, that starts vibrating. Mm -hmm. This vibration uh, through the bearings, you know, I mean, it goes to the foundation. The whole thing is vibrating and that produces sound. Okay, now that sound is not taken care of by silencers or mufflers. Okay, so that's an entirely different field. And that is where our vibration isolators come in, okay. or designing for quietness comes in. In fact, you know, uh, you know, we have we have this facility for research in acoustics, which I got in in 1998 uh, from the you know, uh, you know, uh, Department of Science and Technology. In fact, they only almost uh, uh, I wouldn't say requested, but urged me to uh, you know pick up this and set up this facility. You know, I was a member of the Science and Engineering Research Council of DST. And it was during that time that uh, they requested me to, uh, you know, tell them because, as you said, people don't know much about noise control, etc. Right. Uh, they, they, they asked me to give a seminar. Okay. 
So I, I, I named that seminar as uh, Birds Fighter Technologies. Okay. The main thing I, have, I, I stressed in that one is that trying to reduce noise later as a retrofit is not at all wise. We should know as, as, as engineers, we should really go to how the noise is being produced, okay. how the vibration is being produced, and then design in such a way that that vibration is not produced. And then there's no noise. Okay. Okay. So that is the real solution. That is how fighter technology is. So that is how, after the lecture, they asked me if I could set up a center of excellence for technical acoustics. So I took it up in 1966. I also, with the same money, along with another colleague, we visited several countries, all the facilities which people have put in those countries on uh, its noise control and uh, research in R&D, noise control, etc. Okay, so then came back and then submitted a detailed proposal, and then that was uh, uh, agreed to. And 1998, I got uh, one and a half crore of rupees. Of course, it will be very small by today's standard, but it was, it was 1998, yes, it was equal to almost like 25 to 30 crores. Mm -hmm. And only they made a condition that you know I must get at least 10 percent of that, you know, from or 15 percent from industry. Right. Only then uh, they'll do it. Right. So, in fact. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was consultant to one industry and I told, I said, you know, no, they have put up this condition. And then he laughed. He said, sir, your search for that ends today. Okay. I will do it. I'll okay. give you that 25 lakhs, 15% of that, because okay. I know that all you do is tell me that for the next 10 years, okay. uh, you'll be giving free consultancy to me. Okay. <laughs> I, I said, fine. So, so all my search for that industrialist, uh, you know, etc. ended right in five minutes. Okay. okay? okay. So, so this is how. I'll, so what I want to tell you was that you know, I mean, this is how uh, we, we got into this. And it was during this time. Now let me tell you. Have you heard of Professor D V Singh? Uh, uh, repeat, repeat again, sir. Professor D V Singh. Yes, sir. Uh, he was earlier the vice chancellor of Roorkee University. Yes, I heard. Of IIT Roorkee. Yes, and sir. he was also director of Central Road Research Institute. Right. Sir. Anyway, he actually passed away recently. He uh, became uh, the uh, what did I say chairman of the steering committee of this FRITA, this facility. Frita. Mm. Now during that time, we did a lot of work, published a lot of papers, we took up the projects, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but one thing that he kept saying me, you know, telling me, it is Manjal, you know, this country has more than hundred crore population. A few Manjals won't do. You know, we really need to, you know, produce, as he put, put up, you know, scores and scores of manjals. Only then industry uh, can be killed. Okay. So that is when he told me that uh, I should write a book uh, on uh, noise and vibration control. Although I already had written the book on acoustics, the depth and mufflers, but that was international. So then, you know, uh, based on his uh, advice, you know, this is the book I, you know, can you read it? Yes, sir. Noise and Vibration Control by Munjal. Yeah. Okay. So this book, uh, I, you know, I, it is written for the layman, I would say. Okay. That means a person who has just basic degree, he doesn't need mathematics, no derivations at all. Everything I have given in terms of physical concepts, ready to use formally, uh, then uh, there's a design tables, then solved examples, unsolved exercises, with answers. Everything is done in such a way that, you know, this book, any engineer in industry uh, can have and should have on his desk all the time. Will this be helpful even for graduating engineers, sir? Are those who are graduating? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, it is written as a textbook. In okay. fact, I'm now that I was I'm coming to that. Okay. So, now this book, uh, you know, was, has been published as an IASC lecture note series. Okay. But in collaboration with World Scientific Publishers, Singapore. Now, uh, these people, when they published, uh, they being businessmen first, uh, they, uh, they made they uh, priced it as fifty-five dollars U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, again, in India, you know, my undergraduates won't be able to, you know, uh, you know, pick and they will try to gain the Xerox. If that, that's not on. Yes, yes. So it took me one and a half years of persuasion. And also to the government of India, who had actually sponsored this book, okay, 
uh, to finally tell them that they have to come out with Indian edition. Okay. And now you can see they came out with this one. Okay. You, can, you can see here for sale only in India and South countries. Delicious. Okay, good. And uh, uh, now it is uh, only uh, 900 rupees. Okay. And even this uh, is available here in our institute and they give 20% discount. So basically 700 rupees so is all a student has to, uh, you know, uh, you know, spend. So this is useful, uh, Professor Munjal, this book is useful only for mechanical engineers or electrical engineers also, those who are looking for vibration control. Any, anybody, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Anybody. Because, uh, in fact, the book that I was following in, for this course, uh, before I wrote, wrote my own book, it was written by two electrical engineers. Okay. <laughs> yes. So basically, the fundamentals are, you know, that you are trying to reduce harmonic vibrations. Right, sir. That vibration can be electrical signals. Right, sir. For example, see what happens. Electrical, electrical signal, what happens? You have two state variables, voltage and current. In mechanical, we have force and displacement. Right, sir. In, in acoustics, we have acoustic pressure and particle velocity. Right, sir. Everywhere, when you write down the wave equation, the same. Whether right, you sir. write wave equation for waves in solid rods, or right. you write it for waves uh, in air, right. or even water, right. okay, or for that matter in electromagnetism, same wave equation is same. Right. Only state variables are different. Right. So what I'm trying to say is, in that, that's how I was able to develop, you know, uh, things which write in 1968, and that was from dynamical analogies written by electrical engineers. Okay. What I'm trying to say is, there is a book which every student can use, every industrialist can use, every engineer can use. And then, still, let me tell you, it didn't end there. When the book was published, there's a thing again, got hold of me. He says, Manjal, no, your job is not over. Mm. Now you must take on yourself to train engineers, uh, uh, sorry, teachers. Okay. Train them so that they could offer this course as an elective in their engineering colleges. Okay. Okay. And these uh, boys and girls, when they come out with a big bachelor's degree, they already would know sufficient to be employed by industry. Because now industry, you know, all the time takes mechanical engineers and then offers and gets them, you know, trained in a three-day course, five-day course, etc. Mm -hmm. So it is almost like putting up a superstructure without foundation. Mm -hmm. that this is now the, the foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is what I took on myself. Uh, I have been first course I offered in Bangalore. Fifty-five people attended. Okay. And uh, then out, but out of that, 35 were from industry. In fact, for in, for teachers, it was all free. Okay. But for uh, industry, I was up, uh, you know, charging them 12,000 rupees uh, fee, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. I was not giving them any other uh, stay and all that. Still, they were more particular about uh, coming for this rather than the teachers. Okay. Now I realized that you know, giving something free uh, is not in the in the Always long run not a good thing. Yes, so they, that's not appreciated, and if that's not appreciated, the whole purpose is lost. There's anyway, no, so now, then after that, we offered in IIT, Bhuvaneshwar. The third time it was offered in IIT, uh, Guwahati. Okay. Then uh, uh, my student, uh, who is now associate professor in Hyderabad, he offered it in Hyderabad. Another another one offered in Pune. What I'm trying to say is, we have been covering the whole country, where yes. teachers are being trained, yes. and urged start this as a course. Already AICT has a... <laughs> so now teachers have been trained and now, uh, now they are now starting in their respective colleges. And not only that, I have offered, I have volunteered to hold their hands uh, if they have any problems, even for the, you know, I, I have the, the full solutions for unsolved problems. Uh, so I'm ready to share with the teachers so that, you know, if they have uh, any problem, you know, uh, they can be helped. So how, we, how, we how, we have been trying to do that at all levels. Okay. So sir, how, if someone is already teaching somewhere in some university, private college or some college, someone is uh, teaching, how he can seek your guidance and how can he go for your course, which you mentioned, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah. He can, he can also, uh, you know, attend this course. Okay. See, basically, 
basically the only small the thing is there that if uh, he is from a government engineering college okay uh, then all expenses are taken care of okay uh, whereas if he is from a private college uh, then uh, he has to take care of uh, his college has to take care of in fact even there uh, uh, let me tell you but you don't quote me outside uh, i have been able to help them also because what happens is i charge people coming from industry a good uh, fee and make so much money out of it so i am able to even help them teachers from private colleges also right you know right. with this so right. that i have been doing that's great sir professor munjal uh, now i want to come to though you have already mentioned about this sir but i want you to dead, uh, tell us uh, uh, about this again frita f r i t a because when we talk about dr munjal we talk about two things muffler vibration and frita so sir frita is a dedicated center for research in acoustics under uh, mechanical engineering department of isc Yes. and that that uh, means a facility available a facility for research in technical acoustics that is what frita is so we yes. want you to tell us something about this department sir yeah. so that is what uh, i already hinted to you that when i uh, as a member of icrc uh, i was uh, you know urged to uh, start this uh, center right. so in the first phase it was called center of excellence in technical acoustics right. and second phase it was called facility for research in technical acoustics so right, for, six, for uh, two years the first phase was uh, you know uh, uh, funded and this fit has was funded for 16 years that is 1998 to 2014 right sir even now uh, we have this facility and we are continuing with it and we are we are now funding from my consultancy project right sir okay so what i'm trying to say is uh, this facility uh, had a number of uh, you know uh, Uh, things that you know uh, can you get me one frita report i am just getting that facility yes, frita report yes, i read out to you uh, what uh, what all this facility was uh, meant to do okay excuse me yes sir yeah then the general objectives of right, rita sir. right sir they, they are research and development work in engineering acoustics okay sir industrial consultancy in noise control okay teaching regular courses right sir continuing education that is short term courses for industry right sir helping industry in setting up in house acoustic test facilities right sir uh then holding workshops on quieter technologies in different regions of the country uh, and in house training of engineers and designers from industry advising pollution control boards and the department of environment the ministry of environment and forests right sir development of a textbook on noise and vibration control for engineering graduates right sir development and dissemination of software for generalized analysis and design for quietness then maintaining a library of standards and all relevant data on noise control right. standardizing noise control products development of quiet technologies in association industry and finally acoustic testing of materials great so how many of these we are in position to meet out sir i'm sure all of them or something well without boasting i can say almost all great great okay. let me just tell you one or two which are very important to public okay and you know here it was this uh, advising pollution control boards and the department of environment of the ministry of environment forests now this is how uh, you know i will i can tell you since 1997 i uh, you know i mean i i was in not say i mean from that year to you know 2016 that is for 18 years you know I, i was chairman of the national committee for noise pollution control uh, it was during this uh, my tenure that we uh, helped ministry of environment and forests to come out with gazette notifications uh, for redu- uh, limiting the noise of diesel generator sets portable gensets uh, firecrackers 
public address systems, and also you know this uh, earth moving equipment, off road vehicles, new vehicles, in use vehicles, and so on. Right. Okay. So so all this uh, you know I was responsible, and I spent lots and lot of time uh, in this. And let me also tell you that uh, you know uh, in 2000 I think 2013 to 16 about three years. Yeah, in 2013, uh, I, I got a call uh, if I could chair an expert committee for Delhi Airport Noise Control. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, it was a very uh, strange kind of situation that uh, this, when the new, uh, the, you know, the, I mean, Terminal 3 came in and, and just south of that, you have the third uh, runway. Yes. And because of that runway, a lot of new areas, including spinal, uh, you know, that. Uh, Injury hospital, etc. You know, those people started getting a lot of noise, and they went to the court against the Airport Authority of India, and uh, and then you know they also made uh, uh, as the respondents, uh, uh, Delhi International Airports Limited, Director General of Civil Aviation, and Central Pollution Control Board, and so on. And these people, when they were called to the High Court, these people simply threw their hands up. They said, "Well, there has to be noise." Everybody knew that if they're coming so near the airport, they better be prepared. What can okay. we do? Mm -hmm. And that said, all right, yes, I mean, you have a point, but question is what to do now? We have to help them. So that is mm -hmm. how they said, let's form a committee. Okay. And, but then, you know, they were asked, you know, but where do you get that person, you know, that and immediately these people, I mean, particularly Central Christian Federal, they knew, already knew me, so they had been chairing their national committee. So they said, if I could be requested. So I get a call from in Bangalore, if I could come over and chair this committee. And yeah, so that does I not go into details of that. But main thing I, that I want to tell you is that we were able to put down all do's and don'ts. You know, it took us, uh, you know, almost two years of study. I, we studied the practices of all international airports and how they have been able to control and what we could do here, and what can be done, what cannot be done, et cetera, et cetera. So we did all that. And now uh, Delhi International Airports Limited, uh, they have given under, under uh, uh, undertaking to uh, High Court that they will implement all of them. Okay. Okay. Already, in fact, more than half have been implemented. And every month and they file a report to the High Court that now this status is here, this is here, this has been done. This is almost completed. This will be completed the next month, etc., etc. Et so all that has been going on. Okay. So, this is, so I just wanted to tell you that apart from other things that I read and the book and even I told you that the uh, the main thing was that uh, helping the, you know uh, the pollution control boards and through that the public. And now the most recent thing is in the last one month uh, I have taken on myself you know to advise the Karnataka State Pollution Control Board uh, you know uh, regarding what all can be done to Bangalore, make Bangalore a little better place. <laughs> and that is a big responsibility I've taken on myself because I'll be dealing with all the agencies of, you know, like uh, what we call Bangalore Metro, uh, Metropolitan uh, Authority and Town Spending Authorities and the Bangalore Development Association, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And all this has happened because somebody filed a public investigation to National Green Tribunal. Okay. And National Green Tribunal, then they said that this is an opportunity then uh, you now these people have to now come out of this. So they, so they are told that they, they can co-opt uh, experts, and that is how I have been roped in, and I have gladly uh, accepted this responsibility. So mm -hmm. this is what I want to tell you. All this is again because of my association with the Central Pollution Control. Yes, Professor Munjal, this is a great uh, actually problem also, and you have taken a great uh, responsibility also. I'm I'm sure, uh, sir, uh, you will uh, very. Um, comfortably complete it and the way you have done so far in all other activities. Uh, I want to ask you, sir, like uh, like you just said, uh, so many munjals are required if you want to sort out all these issues. So <laughs> I want to I want to know through you, sir, like IIC is a center of excellence. We can afford to have Frita kind of departments and very good facilities. What about other, uh, you know, other institutes in our nation, sir, like IITs, NITs or other engineering colleges? And why a person, why a student should get into vibration domain? Because, you know, when uh, a researcher will only go into vibration when he finds that there's opportunity in the industries and all. So what is the status of the labs in these colleges, sir? 
and uh, what is the status of uh, jobs or careers in vibration industry since you have taken consultancies of hundreds of industries so what is the opportunities for youngsters who specialize in vibration uh, to get into uh, jobs or careers ahead no in fact as i was telling you the job opportunities are very good you know as you know as a mechanical engineer any industry whatever it is doing whatever it will make vibration it will create vibration it will create noise right yes, so then therefore you know this is one field as we say talk about mechanical engineering right, that uh, you know everything every industry finally is mechanical in the long yes, yes. ultimate sense right. same way noise and vibration will always be there yes sir. okay so therefore all industry all industry i'm telling you they have been looking for people uh, who are in noise control and uh, vibration control. right uh, now vibration control uh, was uh, being taught uh, in several uh, institutes etc uh, but not noise control okay so that's why the uh, that's why this book that i have written i mean i wanted to first make it call it noise control uh, but then you know I, as i was telling you half of the situations in industry are noise is being produced because of vibration right so real uh, way to control noise is control vibration mm -hmm. which really means go back to the design and make sure the unbalanced forces and movements right. you know those are not there you know mo the most important thing is to control the unbalance that's why it's very important to when you have any machine you know you install it make sure that it is balanced at site laser balanced at site not often you know people who want to sell you they say no it has been in done in the industry no that's not doesn't help we have to insist that it will be done at you no know, on site right. so what i'm trying to say is uh, again it's very important that you know new new vehicles new machines they are very quiet but very soon they become noisy okay and that's all because of the wear and tear because the dust getting in etc right. so in this i'm you know uh, i am uh, this one full chapter of 70 pages on strategies for noise control okay and most important of that is controlling noise at the source which means design the machine for quietness mm -hmm. you design the layout for quietness for example as, you know as part of the you know you know, you know perhaps when you want to set up an industry uh, you know uh, you have to submit a, an eia report mm -hmm. okay uh, environmental impact analysis yes that we used to cover only water pollution then they covered only air pollution and now now they have to cover all the four things okay noise uh, water pollution air pollution noise pollution and ecology okay okay so the, now there is so much demand for people in noise and noise control right sir. okay and in fact also if somebody has uh, entrepreneurial uh, Seek and in him. Right. This is one of the best things that you can work on. And come because to that part also, sir. Yeah, yes. because in the whole country, there hardly any consultancy firms, you know, offering complete solutions in noise control. Right, sir. Okay. So in fact, the, 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 a lot of time, I mean, people have asked me if I could do that, but I said, you know, I can't do everything. I mean, I have, I've been doing something which I think I've been doing very well. Mm -hmm. So I'll rather, you know. Uh, great teachers and great books great knowledge uh, and the know how that people can use but finally they have to you know uh, do it themselves so now uh, let me also tell you uh, that uh, there are good facilities in this field at iit madras uh, iit delhi iit kharagpur iit guwahati iit bhubaneswar and uh, apart from this you know in fact my own former phd students they are holding positions you know uh, you know uh, in uh, for example uh, one dr ventilation he is associate professor in iit hyderabad one dr mimani he is assistant professor at iit kanpur uh, then one you know dr kotha he is uh, in iit banbar uh, and here you know recently one person has joined at iit indore okay so more than that also just for your general information i can tell you the present chairman of the all india council of technical education aict professor buddhisan like former phd okay, okay he, yes he i know the noise control under me so what i'm trying to say it is uh, now 
people are there and they are now they have started giving courses and people are being trained and those are a big industry because they want people who can work in noise and vibration what i'm trying to say is is this the right atmosphere uh, for somebody or some per- persons to get together and uh, you know start their own consultancy firm right sir uh, professor munjal uh, you mentioned that many of your phd students are going to new iits and uh, uh, they are setting up the facilities there i want to ask through you sir how much time typically is required to establish a state of art research facility in new iits as you mentioned so that it can train further students and chain reaction could be started in a huge country like india yeah it is very fast now because uh, all these new iits uh, they are giving very good uh, seed money or startup right. money right. to every assistant facility partners right you know iit for example rock etc right. if right. people have been given more than 60 lakhs 70 lakhs right, right to start with and with that you can set up all facilities that you want good labs what i'm trying to say is now you know it can be very fast within i, I would say uh, within one to two years right sir you can set up state of the art facilities right sir mostly by money that is given to you uh, as seed money itself Right, so sir. during that time you will also apply to the dst or crb etc right, for sir. big grants right, and sir. then you know this, so right, what i'm trying to say is atmosphere for research and rnd work in a country has never been as good as it is today is today professor munjal like you are a big authority sir in your domain and from the very beginning you are in isc bangalore uh so a great place uh, where everybody sees every industry has eye on you not only indian industries but uh, foreign universities also uh, foreign uh, industries also uh, sir think of a small place like ropad no uh, ropad is iit and there are industries around ropad no suppose there is a one facility created in vibration and noise control in iit ropad by some some of the faculty who is expert in this then how sir you have a very vast experience in industrial collaborations and uh, handling the consultancy projects of industries uh, what is your take on this professor munjal like if some professor is of there or in iit ropad and uh, students are also there how they can approach these local industries or how local industries should proceed forward so that local consultancies could be uh, basically taken and local problems could be solved in this particular field Uh, in fact you know as a uh, member of the senate uh, you know i was there uh, a member of the senate for almost 8 to 10 years right sir and uh, i used that opportunity to stress upon this all the time okay and uh, uh, they also agree but people do not have confidence right sir see what happens is in, in industry to come uh, to the uh, you know institute right sir uh, they have to be convinced that he is somebody who's able to offer us ready solutions right sir now this is the this is the this is the difference right, you know they are so much used to having ready to, uh, you know solution kind of thing that is from abroad paying them so much money and all that so they they just talk only that language now i i mean uh, you know what i i did was during my you know consultancy association with industries i have been helping uh, them to help themselves that has been my approach you know I, i often tell them that you know uh, you will use this i'll give you for example a series of factors first i'll also tell you what are the various solutions yes, uh, then you come out come to me with you know some basic things that what you want how you will and then i'm ready to hold your hands go further so net result i want is that uh, at the end of the consultancy projects you should be expert yourself right sir. otherwise you will just have solved one problem i mean that that's right. not that's not the way to go over So all the time i have been uh, encouraging those people to help themselves uh, as i told you also uh, making the students also think for themselves right so that has been my approach right. and uh, i hope uh, you know this uh, picks up in fact i also have been giving lectures on this approach right, of sir. challenging yourself and how it works right and you are able to go to industry not with a solution you know you go only with a confidence right, that sir. you will be able to study that problem and then do whatever needs to be done right you know? so this is how but often in punjab you know uh, we don't, you don't have a big industry there yet so they still think only in those terms you know 
that you know i mean i i go the morning in the morning and come back in the evening already the structural problem is solved you know <laughs> so that kind of so they but things will change right. you know they, they will change i'm sure right. already i have have been spreading that culture and right. that is how you know i, I mean i have always tell industry that you should not come to me again for the same problem okay you know you understand right, so for, for example for one vehicle i designed a silencer any other vehicle you should be able to, able to do on your own okay right right sir so that, that is how i i that think it is done professor monjal you have uh, uh, shown a very good book which you have written sir uh, so uh, i was not aware but i am very sure now sir i'll purchase the one uh, copy and i'll read and i recommend others also professor my next three questions i am very sure i will find the answer in that book also but i want you to tell us about this my next three questions were effective technique to control noise which comes out of a machine effective way to control vibration which comes out of a machine and what do you understand by active noise control and active vibration control so these three questions i had prepared i'm very sure i'll get answer in the book but i want through you sir yeah sure you first tell me the first question what was that my first question was sir uh, what is the effective technique to control noise from any let, machine let, let's stop there right. okay uh, you know so basically uh, there are uh, three stages either i can control it at the source right sir or in the path right, that is between the machine and the listener right, and third is at the listener's end okay now i mean i always uh, prefer uh, to help you to design the machine for quietness so that noise is controlled right at the source okay example i mean uh, something that you already know let me again explain this right, uh, i know you know when i before designing a silencer i go to what is happening i know that there is a reciprocating motion of the piston air is sucked in compressed combusted and then discharged okay and this whole thing is repeated cycle after cycle right so now first thing that i tell myself is that can i try to uh, control right there now right there when i what i mean is that you know whether it's a, it's a ignition and it's a diesel diesel engine or spark ignition engine as a spark or takes place or combustion starts and then in a very very short time the flame front covers the entire gas those gases in the cylinder right sir so it this produces a very high rate of change of pressure right sir and this rate of change of pressure being very high the it excites both the you know uh, cylinder cylinder head also through the piston and the, through the piston rod the you know disturbance goes on to the the crankshaft and the crankshaft and you have torsional vibrations and then crankshaft in turn is uh, Uh, supported on the bearings and through the bearings the you know the unbalanced uh, forces go to that the whole thing is set set, set up into vibration so what i'm trying to say is uh, so I, as an engineer i tell myself can i reduce the rate of change of pressure which means can i make the combustion smoother and that is where maximum research has been done and that is where where you have you know stati- stratified charge engines etc now and you find that you know not only noise comes down vibration comes down but even the fuel consumption also comes down because you are able to for example send the right amount of fuel at the right time during the p theta cycle right sir okay so this this is what i mean by one example of reducing noise at the source right sir okay next thing is all right gases have to go out they have to go out periodically and they have to have to be noise okay uh, so then next thing is that you know uh, uh doing it at the path in the path right so i then design a silencer it produces the, as i was telling you the very high uh, you know uh, what should i say uh, impedance mismatch at the, at the firing frequency and therefore make sure make sure the much less noise comes out and see whatever has finally come out even that if that could be absorbed making use of blast wool mineral wool etc right 
the third thing is at the receiver end right sir okay and the receiver end can be for example either the receiver can be at a larger distance right. so that we use we have the inverse square law uh, that same energy you know gets uh, like by you know intensity gets reduced by the inverse uh, r square second thing is that at the uh, that end that person can be given ear muffs or ear plugs so that for himself the silence or if he is a four man etc he can be given a cabin uh, which is acoustically uh, treated so that go to the glasses uh, he can see what is going on in the workshop he can monitor all that at the same time noise is much less right. okay so this is what we mean at the research. so no, the research has been done at all the three levels right. uh, that is how you know we go to, i mean i'll say about noise control right sir. now coming to the vibration control sec your second question was second question was vibration yes sir yeah. the vibration is always because of unbalanced forces unbalanced movements the unbalanced torque and so on right. okay so there now uh, as i was telling you we try to uh, make sure that the unbalance is reduced the unbalance can be reduced only by making sure that you know the center of gravity uh, almost uh, you know is in line with the uh, you know this uh, what should i say uh, the rotational axis okay often you vertical whirl as you know whirl is basically the two don't they don't match and then you unbalanced forces so no so eccentricity should be there right sir uh, no eccentricity eccentric. but again eccentricity cannot be avoided at all Right. for horizontal system right. because when you have horizontal system shaft is horizontal right. okay so then at the, in the middle there will be some deflection right so your, your rotor may be exactly matched every way but then you know because of this you, you will have the whirl you know right. that kind of thing and that can cannot be avoided so then for that next thing that comes is you uh, you put the bearings as near as possible so that Uh, the, the distance by which the shaft comes down the center that can be reduced right sir okay so this is this is how uh, various things can be done and we also then find for example if i have a six cylinder engine right yes. uh, it is uh, all primary for forces secondary forces right sir and, and then i mean moment all are balanced right sir okay so right. always use never use a single cylinder engine in right. fact single, single cylinder engine is the worst thing both from vibration point of view and the noise point of view okay. and that is that is why you find this mock pits right in etc which are single cylinder engines they are very noisy right sir. in fact you won't believe that right, uh, you know if you go by energy you know that the total acoustic energy generated by a, a motor bike single cylinder motor bike is not less than that of a truck right sir. okay you know all because of the single cylinder so what i'm trying to say is there we go to multi cylinder engines right. uh, etc so that there is a in her in her balance right sir oh. okay but uh, professor mujal i want to <laughs> ask you like uh, if someone is noise control specialist in industry is he also vibration control specialist or these two yes. profiles are different yes 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 in fact that is why though i was asked to write this book on noise control you written for vibration control right and vibration control yes and you you know the chapters you know uh, there are two full chapters on the front see the first chapter is on noise and its measurement right sir uh, second is vibration and its measurement right sir and third is vibration control right sir and then only i go to uh, acoustics of rooms partitions and closures barriers mufflers silencer etc right sir what i'm trying to say is that all uh, vibration induced noise you know uh, calls for control of vibration and that is the best way to control is at the source that's why i am covering both together so sir can we say that uh, effective uh, uh, noise control can be done by effective vibration control or vice versa something like that yes in fact uh, 50% of uh, situations are such that noise is primarily being produced by vibrating body okay and there we only worry about vibration control right sir so the best way to control it at the source right sir okay. but when still of course there are situations when you know 
I mean, it is controlled, but not sufficient. If I a simple example, I can give you. If you have, let's say, one megawatt uh, E set. Right, sir. Okay. Now, I mean, it is already six cylinder, eight cylinder, twelve cylinder. So, unbalanced forces are under control. Right, sir. Right, sir. Still, they are not sufficient in the control right, because sir. you also have rate of change of pressure happening in the cylinder. Right, sir. Okay. So that is why the body noise coming from the body. Right, sir. Uh, uh, you know, engine. Right, sir. Has to be controlled by using an acoustic enclosure. Right. Not only vibration isolators, but an acoustic enclosure. Right, sir. Okay. And even acoustic enclosure must have uh, vibration pads, etc. Along with that, and that is how we are able to control. So we use silencers to control only exhaust noise, intake noise. We use acoustic enclosure to make sure that body noise doesn't go out. But then we also use vibration mounts. You know. At every level, to make sure that structure bone sound, right. you know, that is also controlled. Right, sir. Okay. So this is how, you know, for example, any pipes going out of the enclosure, they will have their own uh, acoustic sleeves. Right, sir. So that you know, is not uh, the mechanical touch. Any 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 mechanical short circuiting has to be avoided. And that is how I also have been teaching uh, architects in how they can design buildings uh, in such a way. That any noise and vibration produced by service machinery in the basement right. does not go through the you know the, to the pillars right. onto the first floor, second floor, higher floor. Otherwise, you will have a disastrous kind of situation. Okay, Professor Munjal, you mentioned that if someone wants to uh, think of entrepreneurial opportunities in this domain, then they are immense. Sir, yes. can you can I request you to mention <laughs> some of uh, such? Uh, uh, some yeah. of such a domains in which entrepreneurial opportunities exist. Uh, yes. Uh, so, as I told you, every industry has this problem. Okay, and uh, uh, people like me are very, very few. So uh, already, this uh, opportunity has been uh, recognized. And if you uh, look at, for example, the uh, United States, uh, this one. So in the directory, uh, you will find, uh, I mean, hundreds of acoustic consultancy firms who have their own test facilities, their own instruments that can go out and test. And not only that, they have also uh, developed their own materials or uh, material testing facilities in house. You know, so like that, everything they have, okay. And then they take up complete jobs. For example, somebody is developing, let us say, a, a new uh, machine. So complete thing is uh, done uh, by this company. And this company takes up the complete development of the machine from the vibration and noise point of view. Yes. Okay. Similarly, when somebody is putting up a new factory, uh, then you know the complete layout. You know, layout of the, end of the factory, like for example, if it's a refinery, etc. It's a big thing where you have hundreds of places where you have pumps and compressors and you know all sorts of things. And so you have to really involve a person like me right at that stage. Otherwise, you'll have a big problem because often in, in India we have the problem. You know, they never think of noise control in the beginning, and then they come to me and they say, "Can you help us here?" When I go there, I find that no, it is not isolated problem. It is you know because what we have done here is affecting this, 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 even something hundred meters away. Okay, so you have already made those mistakes. So basically, it's very important that you know uh, then you uh, go to this company, uh, consulting company, and they will uh, really do the complete uh, design of the layout so that noise in the right at the beginning is controlled. You know, as they say, you know the a stitch in time makes, uh, I mean, what is that called? The, is worth the nine later, you know? So basically it's that situation, you know, uh, that's what I try to tell them, that the precaution, uh, you know, is, or whatever you do in the beginning is much better than trying to do something later. So I have been telling people, I never depend on that profits as a solution. Right. Sir. Always control it at the source. Right. Professor Munjal, like uh, we talk about outsourcing from the developed countries to countries yeah. like India, and there's a big opportunity there. Sir, yeah. uh, what is your take on uh, there are so many industries in developed countries also like US 
uh, is there any possibility like uh, indian faculties i mean in the premium institutes like uh, new iits or iits uh, they can think of getting projects from these countries and problem for providing solution to uh, the vibration uh, related uh, this consultancy pro projects uh, yes in fact i'll just give you one example uh, you know there is a, a company uh, uh, opland uh, corporates uh, you know the, the, they are into this uh, compressors right sir uh, and earlier it was called uh, kloskar copland before right, that it was called kloskar brothers right sir anyway i was consultant to kloskar brothers uh, and uh, then it became kloskar copland and then they wanted to set up a test uh, chamber for testing hermetically sealed compressors right sir uh, for noise right sir and they came to me uh, for uh, designing that chamber so i, I said it's a very strange request because now you uh, you are a part of uh, copland in usa and they have all this knowledge everything they have those chambers they have all facilities uh, you know why are you coming to me right, you know sir. what they said they said they only asked us to see you Okay. <laughs> okay. Because right. you know it is much cheaper if they can get consultancy from me here, right, and they are giving from there. Uh, but then you know, let me also tell you because this situation was not the only one. I've come across several. Those people want to make sure that their technology does not come to India. Okay. See, they asked them to come to me, take the design, and then get it vetted by them. Okay. So that now they will get from my knowledge free. Okay, okay. Understood. In the name of vetting. Right, sir. Okay, they will get my knowledge free. Right, sir. And in uh, India will be left without uh, new technology which was one of the attractions while for getting into collaboration. Right, sir. Okay. At the same sir. time, they already know. In fact, they know about me. That means already they don't know about my work, etc., my capabilities. Right, okay, sir. and that's why they asked us them to get the consultancy from me. but then made also sure that you know in the name of vetting everything all my calculations everything had to be shared with them so as you rightly said they are very good businessmen sir yeah that's, that's what they <laughs> do and they, 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 you can't beat them that they, they are good at <laughs> that is true sir uh, professor munjal uh, i have already taken lot of your time i'll take only small more time sir because it is going very good and a lot of knowledge flow is there from your side so i want sir uh, uh, your uh, uh, this whenever uh, Uh, engine efficiency gets decreased engine efficiency is decreased when we install mufflers in engine so how to handle this problem sir yeah there is a uh, general view that a good silencer means that it will put more back pressure on yes, the sir. engine yes sir so piston will have to uh, have some pumping losses because they'll have to push against that pressure right And sir to that extent the friction of horsepower will increase right or sir. in other words the net Uh, power available that will decrease to that extent. Right, right sir. Uh, well, it is only partially true. It's not fully true. Okay. You know, I I talked to you about my working on auto rickshaw noise for right, at, uh, on auto rickshaws. Right, sir. You know, uh, we designed mufflers, better mufflers, which give them seven decibels uh, more reduction than the earlier ones were giving. and then we also reduce the back pressure at the same time instead of increasing okay we reduce it by about 2 to 3% right sir and and that was my first uh, you know way of uh, telling people that they should get out of the notion that good silencer means uh, more back pressure no in fact we improve the uh, reduce the back pressure and also reduce the noise at the same time okay so what i'm trying to say is that uh, it's all question of uh, Uh, to whom you have gone for that <laughs> design, okay, and that is how uh, it can. So what really uh, what I proved was what you need. You know what you uh, need in the thermal efficiency is not the uh, mean back pressure, but instantaneous back pressure. Okay. So it's very important the right wave comes, uh, you know, at the to the cylinder at the right time. Okay, and that is for example how you might have seen that you say. Talk of tuning, uh, you know, for auto mopeds, etc. Right, sir. Okay, so that is all works on that principle. That instead in his back pressure, uh, is such that the right kind of wave goes to the piston at the right time. Right, okay, sir. and the net result is back pressure is reduced at the same time noise is also reduced. So what I'm saying, uh, you know, that is generally true. But now let me also tell you, having said that, when you go to multi-cylinder engines, 
then that the tuning does not work because already they are cancelling each other's uh, effect in cylinders okay so there yes back pressure uh, is important uh, now we have come out with the uh, silencers uh, which are called uh, uh, multiply connected uh, mufflers which means flow passage has more than one path so if it gets more pressure here it takes other path or divide the flow in inverse proportion of the resistances so in this way we have been able to come out in silencers which are very good from the acoustic point of view and exerts very little back pressure okay so those those problems also we have been able to solve sort it sort it out uh, professor munjar my last two questions from you sir uh, one question is related to again you uh, you have already mentioned that you have taken a responsibility of uh, uh, karnataka government related to bangalore no noise control so what other activities you are planning for you sir in next couple of years what are the main things <laughs> well I, i want to tell you here that uh, you know uh, i am now retired okay as so uh, after retirement i was uh, retained by the institute as uh, honorary professor uh, and then also indian national science, uh, science academy uh, uh, made me senior uh, i mean they called it uh, senior scientist and also indian national academy of engineering also honored me with this distinguished professorship so i have been uh, taken care of so even now when i am talking to you i am talking from my office the same environment i have my project assistant sitting here okay so i am still carrying on uh, that work at same time at this age of uh, 75 years now i cannot be planning for the next two years <laughs> okay <laughs> so okay i am i am only responding to uh, whatever uh, requests come to me right. okay whether it's my students or my institute or uh, Karnataka government or central government or industry right. have still some projects with me. Okay, so I am just uh, uh, doing all what best I can do. But I am definitely not planning on my own. That's okay. Okay, okay, okay sir. Too, too late in the day to plan. Okay, okay sir. Uh, <laughs> my my last question, Professor Munjal, to you is like uh, we came to know about your book. Obviously, there is a source of information. Uh, any other source of information through which? thousands of student can learn about you or your uh, teachings in vibration uh, any source of information from where they can learn about you they, let's say videos or youtube or anything sir oh yes in fact that's, as i was telling you i am still uh, you know whenever uh, opportunity comes I, i really offer full course i think i cover the complete book in 7 days 5 okay. days okay. 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 so i also involve my former students who can uh, share with me the teaching load okay what i have done is For this whole book, I have been covering in 450 slides. Okay. Okay. So, so how, how many how many hours of course it is, sir? How many hours of duration uh, it is? You can say uh, eight hours a day. Okay. Uh, five days. Eighty. Eighty so hours. Forty hours. Which is exactly like a one semester teaching. That's true. <laughs> okay. That's true, sir. So I I recover complete thing so that these teachers. I mostly I have been training teachers. but they should then go and start the courses and i again of course i hold their hands uh, to help them in whatever way i can so all that i am doing okay uh, so is there any course for students also sir or only teachers no yeah in fact as i was telling you see uh, when i go there i uh, offer this one so students can also attend in fact okay. generally more than 50% are students okay Most great graduate students you know okay. but okay. even undergraduates can do there is this problem okay So, so these are said, this is this offline course only, sir, or online course is also uh, offered. Uh, see, it is now both. <laughs> okay. But as I said, I have got uh, uh, all the slides. Okay. okay? So, okay. right, the way I am talking to you, same way, I, okay. I offered. In fact, I I gave four hour uh, courses to the uh, local bodies in the mm. Bangalore noise control side. Okay. I, I did that. I made slides. similarly okay. i have all the slides here so it can be done online also because that will be wonderful sir if it reaches to the remotest of the parts of india and it reaches to the students uh, yes. those who need that will be wonderful it will be so, pleasure yeah professor munjal i now say thanks to you sir because uh, it is a very very long interview to ours and i could see you were feeling a little bit uh, uncomfortable also but you uh, very nicely you explained everything sir 
and uh, i'm really honored sir here to interact with you and god bless you with a long life sir and we would like to see lot many more contribution from your side for coming decades thank you so much and uh, it has really been a pleasure talking to you and yes. i hope you know it goes to the right people and who really make the right decisions both for the career as well as in active vibration noise company. surely it will sir thank you sir